नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग प्रैक्टिस कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो वील स्टडी हाउ टू चेन ट्रांसफार्मर्स वन आफ्टर द अदर इन एन एफिशियंट मैनर द प्री प्रोसेसिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन आर अप्लाइड वन आफ्टर अनदर ऑन द इनपुट फीचर मैट्रिक्स हिर इज एन एग्जाम्पल इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वी अप्लाय सिंपल इम्प्यूटर एंड स्टैंडर्ड स्केलर वन आफ्टर द अदर ऑन द फीचर मैट्रिक्स it is important to apply exactly same transformation on training evaluation and test set in the same order failing to do so would lead to incorrect predictions from the model due to distribution shift and hence incorrect performance evaluation a scale learn dot pipeline module provides utilities to build a composite estimator the composite estimator is a chain of transformers and estimators there are two classes pipeline and feature union the pipeline class constructs a chain of multiple transformers to execute a fixed sequence of steps in data preprocessing and modeling on the other hand the feature union combines output from several transformer objects by creating a new transformer from them let's first study the pipeline api from sklearn.pipeline module the pipeline api sequentially apply a list of transformers and estimators the intermediate steps of pipeline must be transformers that is they must implement fit and transform method the final estimator only needs to implement the fit the purpose of the pipeline is to assemble several steps that can be cross validated together while setting different parameters there are two ways to create pipeline objects either using the pipeline constructor or using make underscore pipeline method the pipeline constructor takes a list of tuple the first part of the tuple is some kind of an id of the transformation that we want to apply and second is the transformer object itself the pipeline object exposes interface of the last step let's take an example here we are defining a pipeline object on several steps defined in this estimator object and the estimator object is a list of tuples the first tuple is the simple imputer so we are using a simple imputer transformer and we are giving it a name called simple imputer so that we can refer to this particular step through this particular name so the second tuple contains the second transformation which is standard scalar so here we have standard scalar transformer object and the name that we have given to this particular transformer object so we put this list of tuples as an argument in the pipeline constructor and construct a pipeline object another way to construct pipeline object is to make underscore pipeline method it takes a number of estimator objects so we don't need to give tuples as in case of pipeline here we can just give the number of estimator objects for example we can specify the same thing with make underscore pipeline by specifying the number of estimator object one after the other so here we make pipeline with simple imputer transformer as the first step and standard scalar transformer as the second step so let's start to understand what is the advantage of using pipeline by looking at two code snippets one without pipeline and second is with the pipeline we can see that in the in the first step without pipeline we have to write each and every line of the code and make sure that we pass the feature matrix in appropriate manner so here we use the original feature matrix we perform simple imputer on this to handle the missing values then we get x underscore imputed as a transform matrix we pass this transform matrix to the standard scalar transformer which performs the feature scaling in this particular transform matrix and then we get another transform matrix which is x underscore scaled if you want to apply further transformers on this we need to pass this x underscore scale to that particular transformer 
So here we have to make sure that we are we are passing these uh, these transform feature matrix appropriately, and there is no mistake. If there is any mistake, what would happen is that we might miss some of the transformations in between. And we have to also make sure that we apply the same piece of code on other data sets like evaluation data set as well as on the test data set. If we fail to do that, it will have disastrous consequences. So now you look at the same piece of code with pipeline and you can immediately see that the code with pipeline looks much more elegant and manageable than this particular piece of code. In the, in the pipeline construct, we simply specify the list of tuples containing the transformer objects along with their IDs. And then we initialize the pipeline object and we simply call pipe.fit underscore transform on, on the feature matrix. We don't have to pass around the, the intermediate transform feature matrix properly from one transformer to the other. So you can see that here the final method is standard scalar. Hence, this fit and so we expose the pipeline object exposes this fit underscore transform method of the final estimator or final transformation object. So here we apply pipe dot fit transform by passing feature matrix as an argument. So what it will do is it will first apply simple imputer and then the standard scalar transformation to the original feature matrix and then we'll get a transform feature matrix with both the transformations applied to the, to the original feature matrix. So let's see how to access individual steps in the pipeline. So in this particular uh, example code, there are total three steps. The first step applies simple imputer transformation followed by principal component analysis and then there is a linear regression estimator at the end. So what it is doing is before applying the linear regression estimator or before applying linear regression on the feature matrix, you are first filling up the missing values, then applying principal component analysis to select important features and then we, then we apply this linear regression on these particular features that are obtained through principal component analysis. Now you can see that we have instantiated a pipeline object with these three steps. So now let's say if you want to access the, the second step or the second estimator which is PCA. So there are total four ways to access it. We can either call pipe.namestep.pca. So when we are calling this named step, we are actually using the IDs that we are giving here. So we can refer to PCA by this ID by calling pipe.namesteps.pca. In the same manner, the third step can be accessed as pipe.namespace.regressor. The first step can be accessed as pipe.namesteps.simpleimputer. So this is the ID that is used in named steps. So the second estimator can be also accessed by pipe.steps1. So steps is some kind of, a, uh, of an array that stores the steps and the first step is PCA. We can also call pipe1 to refer to the same, same thing which is PCA step or we can call pipe PCA. This is more like a dictionary notation. Got it? So there are four different ways in which we can access the second component. Sometimes we need to access parameters of each step in the pipeline. And, the, and these parameters can be accessed by the name of the estimator, double underscore the name of the parameter. Let's take an example. In this particular code, we are applying simple imputer followed by principal component analysis followed by linear regression. And you can, say, you can see that we are setting the parameter of this PCA step. We are trying to set n underscore components parameter of the PCA. And we are referring to this parameter as name of this particular estimator, which is PCA, double underscore, and name of the component, name, name of the parameter. 
and that name is n underscore component. So we have PCA double underscore n underscore components that will refer to this particular parameter of the PCA and we are setting this parameter to 2. We can also perform grid search with pipeline. Here we are specifying first the parameter grid where we are trying to find out which imputer is bet better. So we have three imputers, one is pass through, second is simple imputer and third is KNN imputer. By pass through we mean that we don't want to perform any imputation. We want to, we want to experiment with two classes, one is SVC which is support vector classifier and logistic regression classifier. And we want to try with three different values of the parameter C which is inverse of regularization. The lower value of C indicates the stronger regularization. So you want to try three values of C which is 0.1, 10 and 100. And what we do is we specify this parameter grid. So what will happen is it will try to find out the best combination of imputer CLF that is the class and the value of C through the grid search CV. So we call grid search CV on this particular parameter grid. We'll study grid search CV in detail in, in probably in next one or two weeks. And grid search CV basically what it does is it tries to find out the, it, it first performs the grid search and finds out the values of the hyperparameter that maximizes the cross validation score. So we perform the grid search CV with cross validation on the pipeline object with the specified parameter grid. And at the end of the process, we get the best values for the imputer class and, uh, and hyperparameter C. So transforming data is computationally expensive task. For grid search, transformer need not be applied for every parameter configuration. They can be applied only once and the transformation data can be reused. That can be achieved by setting memory parameter of a pipeline object. The memory parameter takes either a location of a directory in string format or joblib.memory object. In this particular illustration, we are specifying the location of the directory in the string format. So what are the advantages of pipeline? Pipeline helps us combine multiple steps of end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline into a single object. It enables joint grid search over parameters of all the estimators in the pipeline. It makes configuration and tuning of end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline quick and easy. It offers convenience as developer has to call only fit and predict method on the pipeline object. It reduces code duplication. With pipeline object, one doesn't have to repeat code for pre-processing and transforming on the test set. So that was about pipeline construct. The second construct is feature union. So feature union concatenates result of multiple transformer object. It first applies a list of transformer objects in parallel and their outputs are concatenated side by side into a larger matrix. So feature union and pipeline can be used to create complex transformers. So let's see how to combine transformers and pipelines in the feature union. So feature union accept a list of tuple. Each tuple has a format, the estimator name followed by the estimator object. This format is very similar to the arguments that we give in the pipeline object. So here we are defining a feature union object with a list of transformers. So this is the name of the transformer which is numpypeline. We are giving some kind of an ID followed by its object. So here there are two pipelines. One is on the one which is applied on the numerical features and the second one that is applied on the categorical features. So the so the num underscore pipeline has num underscore pipeline object which has got three steps. One is the selector, second is the imputer and third is the standard scalar. 
the selector selects selector basically selects first four and then it performs a pass through so it select first four features and then it applies simple imputer on it with using the strategy minimum and then it applies or it does the scaling of the features on the other hand the column transformer applies label binarizer so let's visualize this composite transformer that we that we created using the pipeline and column transformers so here you can see that we have a feature union which has two pipeline num pipeline and cat pipeline num pipeline has a selector which is a column transformer which select first four features then there is a pass through then we apply simple imputer on the resulting matrix on the resulting feature matrix followed by a standard scalar on the other hand the categorical pipeline applies label binarizer and what feature union does it does is it concatenates output from these two pipelines and makes a single transform feature matrix so that's it for data preprocessing so we looked at different preprocessing steps like how to perform how to perform its scaling of the features how to handle missing values how to perform feature selection feature reduction through pca and then how to use the pipeline construct pipeline and feature union construct for efficient way of writing code for performing data preprocessing hope you use all these constructs in subsequent classes of machine learning practice course so this was one of the most important topics that we that we learned and as i said in in my first class that 80 to 85% of the work in machine learning that we do is in data preprocessing and constructing right kind of features in that sense the pipeline and feature union are two important tools in your toolkit